Hey, hey, how are you? Hey, Daniel, how, I'm good. How are you? It's all good. So, you're a computer science student at the University of Kentucky. What, how's life there? It's pretty good. Semester is starting to kick off, so it's a little bit busy, but it's summer. It's nice outside. There's quite a bit of sunlight, so that's good to to get some work done. And so far, so good. So, what what exactly do you learn as a computer science student in Kentucky? As a computer science student, we are taught more how to think about problems and how to like dissect problems, not so much programming. Like we do learn programming, but we learn programming as a skill or as a tool we were able to use to dissect problems. So our main focus is on learning how to think and learning how to think very technically and how to implement solutions based on those analysis. So if you were hired a, like in a company, what would you do? If I was hiring a company, computer science is very broad. So I could be a lot of different roles. I could be a web developer, making websites, making the front end, the back end. I could be an application developer. I could be a software developer. So like give back working over phone or, or your computer, stuff like that. Or I could be in the field of data, mathematics. It's very broad. Okay. So you, the, they teach you how to like build websites and stuff like this. If you choose that specialization, yes. What is that's not will you choose? Yeah, my specialization is centered on data and mathematics, so much more technical, not so much website design. And um, I chose that because website design is something very common and you can learn on the internet by yourself. It's it's where you hear a lot of people going like, Oh, you don't need a degree because we were able to do this. But most of them are in web development. So if I ever want to go there, I can get the skills elsewhere. Okay, so but like you're not American and you're studying in America. How how is it that experience? It's been pretty cool. Like Kentucky it doesn't have a international fame for being very diverse, but once you come to campus and really talk to people, you will notice there's a lot of like a very strong international community and uh, making friends. It's good because everybody who's international wants to be friends with you because you relate and you're friendly. So. It's been pretty good in that sense. People here are very friendly, even non-international people. Everybody wants to help us because they know it's it's difficult to be without your family and, and travel that much. So everybody tries to help you. How was it the first weeks you were there alone outside of your country? How, how was all of that? My first weeks, it was confusing because I was excited that I also was um, sad because, you know, I am with my family. It's going to be a couple of months maybe until I get to see them so it was exciting but it was also like kind of like sad because I was alone um making fun making friends is fun going out is fun you you meet a lot of people here and everybody has like a like a different story and everybody has a different reason why to come to Kentucky because most people even if they're from the states they're not from Kentucky so everybody has a special reasons why I've heard people coming from California I've heard people coming from New York and it's like why would you come to Kentucky but once you ask them and talk to them, it makes sense. It's a very nice school. But the, the life in campus, how like everything is there in the same campus. Yeah. Like everything, yeah, the, like give me examples of it. Yeah, the city kind of revolves around the campus. So if we want to go to an, an event, it's probably on the UK stadium. Um, if we want to go to the supermarket, it's probably around campus. If you want to go to the movie theater, it's probably around campus. Um. Most of the events are run by UK or sponsored by UK. Um, sports culture here is very big. So we like going to games, whether that be football, basketball, baseball. Everybody likes UK and everybody likes when UK wins. So it's a very big culture. Have you gone to any basketball games? I have. I have. I had the privilege of sitting in front row in, in multiple games because I met a friend who had access to there. And I can tell you it's pretty cool. And like you need to pay to get into those games or how does it work? Yeah, so imagine the stadium is like very big, right? But there's a section just for students. I would say maybe around one fourth of the stadium where mm -hmm. students pay to get in. I think it's around $15 and you get in. And then there's like everybody tickets, which you can get for like $200, I think. And then there's the ones that I got. I don't know how much they are, but it was, I felt very privileged to be able to do that. And and yeah, students get one section that it's typically behind the backboard and you have to be standing up. And I remember for the game against Kansas, which is one of our biggest rivals, 
the line the game was at like 5 p.m and there was line at 8 a.m to get in so that's that's how big of the culture it is here because like you have some of the best nba prospects in the world like some of the yeah. best prospects period basketball prospects. period they're, they're... yeah this year Ooh. this year we had a uh, case wallace he went i think number 10 pick overall for the nba yeah i remember watching him he's very good and do you like american football as well or or not that much. I'm, I'm starting to like it a little bit. Um, I've been starting to watch it, and it's a little bit hard to learn because there's so many positions, but it's fun. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And after you study and you do all of this, what do you want to do afterwards? As a, car- as a career. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. My goal is to work in data science field. And um, it's very hard to break into out of school, so I probably have to get a job in between. But yeah, my, my goal and my main objective is to be either data scientist, data analyst, anything around the world data. And you're a STEM major, so you have a specific privilege in America and you yes, well, about it? Everybody who comes here, regardless of the degree, can stay for about a year after you graduate to work. Um, but STEM majors have the ability to extend to two other years, so in total of three years. So I could work for three years after I graduate legally without having to do any paperwork or any any permanent residence status. Um, the only plot twist to that is that most companies don't want to hire that because they know after the three years, you either have to go or they're going to have to pay a lot for you. So most companies don't do that, but it's still a great advantage to have. What happened like if you want to stay after those three years? Um, the company has to sponsor you. So... Kind of like how you, when you get married and you get a green card, you're kind of doing the same thing, but with the company. So you're marrying the company. Basically, they have to sponsor you. They have to pay for all the process, which I think it's around $5,000 for them. Uh, I think you have to stay for two years with the company at least, or already half two years. So if they fire you or if you leave, um, I think your status is revoked and you have to go back. Ooh. Okay, okay. And after being in Kentucky, would you like to go to Switzerland or something like that? Or Europe is nice. Yeah, I, we've been talking about Switzerland a lot and Europe in general. The quality of life, I, I feel like it's just so much better than here. Here's very, very busy, very focused on your work, which can be good to learn and to, to become better in your work profession. But I feel like Europe is a whole different level when it comes to work-life balance and the culture is a lot different when it comes to that. So so I like Europe. I like Switzerland, especially because of the computer science opportunities. Um, it's not all the possibilities that I go there for a master's school because they have good schools for computer science. So yeah, Switzerland is a great country to, to be in, in my opinion. But can you study in Switzerland only in English? Or do you need to learn? Yeah. I actually wanted to go to Switzerland for these four years, but I needed to learn French on German. And the benefit is that for graduate school, uh, it's not more mostly on English. So I think you can speak English, depends on the school. Okay. So you're looking to maybe going to Switzerland for a master's degree instead of sitting in Kentucky? Yeah, I'm looking at uh, okay. not France. France, I uh, <laughs> haven't looked a lot into France. I know we spoke about a little bit of camera and it sounds like a very cool experience. I, I like France as well. I just don't think they have the computer science culture they have here or in Switzerland. Um, mm-hmm. But I think France is a great option for anybody who has any other career fields. Okay. Okay. Well, I know you have a short period of time, but if you have any questions you want to make or something like that. Yeah. How about you tell me a little bit about France? How, how is it? So I know I you're in Costa Rica right now. Yeah, I'm in Costa Rica at the moment. Well, I think it's quite cool. It's quite cool. They take you seriously. It's not like you're not seen as a student. You're seen as an adult that's living alone in an apartment. So they don't see you as like you. They see you as a college student. To me, they just see me as an adult. So when, you know, when you come from a nice family and the other side of the world and then you go alone and you're like an adult, you have to pay electricity bills. You have to 
you know, buy toilet paper, like stuff like this. It's not, I was not accustomed to it, but the culture, it was, for me, it was easily to accustomed to. I didn't see such a difference between the, our country and France. The people uh, were nicer, weirdly, because you, you have in mind that people in France are assholes. But mm -hmm. that's probably just American tourists in Paris that are talking from bad experiences. But when you see actual French people from the South, from the West of France, from the east, like even close to, well, of the south of France, of the, you know, of the Côte d'Azur, all of it, people are actually really nice. And as you well, said, if you think yeah. about it, if you think about it, most people are going to Paris, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a big city. Just like how people say people in New York are rude, well, you cannot generalize the whole country based on a city. So I've heard that's where the stereotype comes from because, yeah, people. People generally are nice, except for big cities that it comes a little bit too busy. But the quality of life in the South France is amazing. Food is amazing. People dress super good. People act super good. They act, I think they act like we acted 50 years ago. Or, you know, <laughs> like they, they act old, but like good with models. They eat good. They walk good. They dress good. All of these things that nowadays we don't actually care about, they do care. And you take them into your life, you dress good to go to school, stuff like this that, you know, I, I used to go to joggers to high school. I, you know, I don't quite care. And then you have to put in a blazer to go to school. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah. But no, I, I do like it. And I feel you know, the work-life balance is quite good. They do give you time off, but you have to be quite smart because like, out of my first year, 142 out of 300, you know, passed. So you have to be serious. So you're on your own. Nobody will help you, but they will not kill you, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's good to hear. I appreciate the opportunity for today. Uh, don't worry, dude. I hope to see you having a big computer science company one day. And we can, next time you're in Costa Rica, we go to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, see you and thanks for the interview. Bye. First.